And I've heard some Chinese say that you believe in democracy. Well, we have 1.4 billion votes and you have 300 plus million. So let's be democratic about it. John Quelch is here. He is the Dean of the University of Miami Business School. Let's bring in our guest, John Quelch, who is the Dean of the Miami Business School at the University of Miami. I think you have to appreciate the fact that China was once the most important country in the world economically. Uh, you have to appreciate the fact that there are 1.4 billion Chinese, so round about four times plus as many Chinese as Americans. And I've heard some Chinese say that you believe in democracy, well we have 1.4 billion votes and you have 300 plus million. So let's be democratic about it. Um, the Chinese definitely are on a mission to be the most important country in the world. Chinese people would say to Americans, why do you have to be first all the time? Why not step back and, you know, gracefully hand over the baton? As the United Kingdom, it might be said, handed it over to America, maybe not willingly, but after the uh, debacle of World War II, there was no question about who had the money to drive the world economy forward, right? So we have to be a little bit more sensible in terms of understanding Chinese history and Chinese thinking and not see everything that China does as a competitive threat. Um, the reason why there's such a big angst at the moment, I think, is because 30 years ago, no one at the CIA or anywhere else actually predicted the rate of growth of China. You know, we were outsourcing uh, the manufacture of cheap sneakers to China, and wasn't that a, a smart and clever thing to do? But no one expected that 30 years later, we would have a situation where their military were significantly advanced, uh, where telecoms industry significantly advanced, AI could be in the lead pretty quickly, electric vehicles, electric cars could be in the lead pretty quickly. No one expected that within 30 years. So now all of a sudden, it's kind of impossible to contain China anymore. On a purchasing power parity basis, they're already the number one economy in the world. And so we've got to figure out how to cooperate as well as compete. We can't just play the line, this is a competitive threat, this is an existential threat. That's not going to work unless you want World War III. You've got to learn how to cooperate as well as compete. And it is a very serious challenge, but I think that, you know, the battle for hearts and minds, etc., etc., you know, we have to keep fighting that battle every day. You know, we have a point of view, we have something important to say. Uh, we should be saying it much more sensibly, much more aggressively, much more consistently, globally as well as domestically. So I think as the growth in China slows down, you know, 6% this year it was double digits until uh, a few years ago. When the growth slows down, people start having more time on their hands and they start thinking about what else is there to life apart from making money. Now that I've got all of my worldly goods, um, I've uh, you know been able to achieve an incredible improvement in the quality of life compared to what my parents had. What else is there to life? And that's when people will start thinking, you know, democracy, um, elected uh, government, and so forth. <laughs>